Welcome back guys, Sherry here. Now the first time I saw a dragon, I was just blown away. And I really didn't know what to do. So I'm gonna share with you guys everything I know about dragons. I'm also gonna show you where and how I farm them. So whether you're an experienced player or you're just starting the game, this video may help you. And if you enjoy content like this, go ahead and smash that like button for me. And don't forget to subscribe, that way you don't miss any content. But first, let's go over a little bit about the dragons. All dragons will spawn once a day. So when you're farming these dragons for their parts, just build yourself a fire and sit until morning. Now you can get them to spawn at night, but you may have to sit twice because you need to sit and let a whole day pass. So I just find it easier to do in the mornings. And for those of you that are unaware, all dragons are associated with a spring. Farosh is associated with a spring of courage located right here in the Farron region. Dinral is associated with the spring of power here in the Akala region. And Nadra, she is associated with a spring of wisdom here in the Hatino region. So if this is your first encounter with a dragon, all you need to do is shoot them anywhere in the body so you can get a scale. But now if you hit them in the face, the horn, or the foot, you're gonna end up getting a fang, a horn, or a claw. But for this purpose, we just need to hit them anywhere in the body and get a scale. And then we will just drop it in the water at the corresponding spring and you will reveal a shrine. Okay, so what do we need dragon parts for? Well guys, you're gonna need it to upgrade your armor along the way, and I'll leave that information in the description. But we can also sell these dragon parts. The scale is gonna sell for 150, the claw for 180, the fang for 250, and the horn is gonna sell for 300 rupees. But not only can we sell these dragon parts, we can also cook with them. Each part is just gonna add additional time. However, if you cook with a horn, it's gonna give you an automatic 30 minutes to any buff that you're making. Now we can make ourselves a high level movement speed boost by cooking up four lotus seeds and a shard from one of the dragon's horns. And we can also make ourselves a high level attack power boost by cooking up four mighty bananas and a shard from the dragon's horns. But if you would like a high level defense boost, just put iron shrooms in place of the mighty bananas. However, if you are making elixirs, you still need to use a monster part with your critters because dragon parts do not count as monster parts. Another thing about these dragons is when you are farming these guys for parts, you don't have to go collect your part every time you get one. You can just leave them on the ground and then collect them after you're finished. And one more thing I'd like to throw out about these dragons is when you shoot a dragon, do not sit at a fire until you see that part fly off. Because if you do, you're still gonna see it, but you're not gonna be able to collect it. It has happened to me a couple of times and you can see it here in the water, but when I get down there, it won't let me collect it. So just make sure and let that part fly off the dragon before you sit at a fire. Okay, so how and where are we gonna farm these guys? Well, Pharaoh is probably gonna be the first dragon that you're gonna run across and he is the easiest to farm. So let me go ahead and show you where I am and how I got here. Now I'm in the Farron region, but we wanna make our way to Riola Spring. Now, if you don't have the shrine that's open, you can still make your way here, but sometimes it's constantly raining, so it does help to just go up the waterfall. Now, to be able to do this, you have to have the Zora armor. If you don't know where to get it, I'll leave a link in the description. Now, once you make it to the top, I just like to go around back and get in this tree. Reason being is you can build a fire in this tree. So it rains a lot here and we don't have to worry about the weather. We can just constantly farm him over and over again. And right here, guys, is where the tree is located in relation to the spring. And all we got to do is just build a fire and sit until morning and Farosh will instantly spawn for you. If for some reason he doesn't, just sit by a fire again or leave the area and come back. And as you can see the next day, it's raining, but I can still build a fire. Now, once you can see and hear the wind, go ahead and get up in the air. And sometimes it helps to look down until you can clear the tree, then look up and you will see him. Now, once you hit him and get whichever piece it is you want, just make sure that piece flies off of him before you sit at the fire again. However, there is a lot of lightning in this area and Pharaoh, he will throw out those electricity orbs. So you could try to avoid them or you could cook yourself up a dish by using three zap shrooms and a shard from one of the dragon's horns and you will get a 30 minute 
high level electricity resistance. You can also use an electric safflina, a volt fin trout, and a shard from one of the dragon's horns. And we can also cook ourselves up an elixir by cooking up three electric darners, don't forget to use a monster part, and a shard from one of the dragon's horns. And they are all gonna give you a 30 minute high level resistance to electricity. But what I like to use is the rubber armor. Now you need to have all three pieces and they need to be enhanced twice by a fairy. So you can receive a set bonus, which is unshockable. Now, if you don't know where to get this armor, I'm gonna leave a link in the description. So even if you get hit by the electricity orbs or you get struck by lightning, you're not going to take any damage, but the beauty of the armor is it doesn't wear off like the dishes and the elixirs do. Now let's head on over to the Spring of Wisdom, where we are going to find Nadra. Now Nadra's been possessed, so to help this dragon out, we've got to hit these four eyes. Now you can hit the first one, as you just saw, right after you run up the steps to the spring. To get to the second one, we need to make our way up top. Now on your way up here, you're gonna run into some wind. You can use your paraglider and it'll help you get to the top of the mountain faster. I found it easier to get on top of this ice pillar. Now this may take a minute. You've got to wait just a minute and let Nadra circle around until you can get a good shot. Now once you get the second one, you're gonna want to follow Nadra down the mountain. Now I dropped down just a little too far, but I got lucky with a jet stream that kind of pushed me back up. But you want to try to stay right above Nadra until you can get a shot. Now once you get the third one, we have to follow Nadra back down the mountain again. Because as you can see, this one's not open yet, so you can't hit it yet. Okay, so now Nadra is not possessed anymore, but now we have to gather a scale. So all we have to do is just shoot her anywhere in the body. Gather your scale, and then we're just gonna drop it into the spring, which will reveal a shrine. And now we can go farm her. So let me get right to it, and I'm gonna show you exactly where I am. You need to be on top of this little hill. You're gonna know you're on the right hill because there's gonna be a Korok right on top. Now, Nadra's path is right over top of this body of water. You could go over here and get on these cliffs and try to farm Nadra from there. But what I noticed is it's very difficult when a scale or a, a horn or something drops down in this water. It's just a pain to get back up. So let me show you why this hill is just so special. As soon as you see Nadra and the wind starts blowing, go ahead and get up in the air. If you have Rivali's Gale, you don't need it right here. In fact, you should save it if you have it, and I'm gonna tell you why in just a minute. From this vantage point, you should be able to get any piece that you want off of Nadra. If you need a fang, hit Nadra in the face. You need a horn, hit the horn. You need a scale, hit the body. If you need a toenail, hit the foot. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but right after I hit Nadra, if you will look, how high up in the air I have gotten. Because after you hit Nadra and you get whichever piece it is you need, just fly a little next to Nadra and the wind will actually push you up even further into the air, which means we can just land right back on top of this hill. And this hill even has a little flat area, so you can build yourself a fire, sit there until morning, and just repeat the process. But what if it's raining? Guys, you can go right over here in the corner of these rocks, build yourself a fire, and sit until morning. If it's raining again and you can't climb the hill, then just build yourself another fire. And right here, guys, is where you should build your fire in relation to where the hill is. And this is why I said save your Rivali's Gale, because you're gonna get more pretty days than rainy days, so you can use your Rivali's Gale to help you get back up on the hill. Besides, by the time you use all three, they're gonna have plenty of time to replenish again. And once you make it back up on the hill, you will already see Nadra coming around the corner. And if you'll look, you can see all my dragon parts just laying down there on the ground. 
That's because I just wait until I'm finished before I go collect them. But something else that's really cool, if you're wondering as to why Nadra has not frozen me yet, because she will throw out those ice balls. Well, I said she. I think of Nadra as a she. I don't know. You guys leave your comments below and let me know if you think it's a she or a he. But anyway, the reason she has not frozen me is because I have the snow quill armor. And if you have the snow quill armor and you have had it enhanced twice by a fairy, you get a set bonus. And the set bonus is unfreezable. So now I'm just gonna go gather all my dragon parts and we can move on to Denral. Now I just did a video on farming Denral in the Elden Mountains. If you haven't seen it and you'd like to check out that spot, click the link in the upper right hand corner. I'm also gonna leave a link in the description. However, there are some people that have had difficulties in getting Denral to spawn in the Elden Mountains. So we're here at the Tabanthan Great Bridge. Now this is a great spot to farm Denral. You should be able to get any piece that you would like off of Denral. Now there is an opening right here in the bridge and you can just kind of look over and be able to get a horn, a fang, and a scale. Now I did not try to get a claw from the foot because I prefer to get up in the air. So let's just build ourselves a fire and sit until morning. Now if you don't immediately see Denral, just give him a few minutes. He spawned for me between 5 and 5.30 a.m. Now, if you have the Flame Breaker armor and you have had it enhanced twice by a fairy, you're gonna get a set bonus. And the set bonus is fireproof, which means you can fly straight through the flames. As long as you don't touch Denral, you will receive no damage. And if you will kinda stay right over top of Denral, the wind will actually push you right back up onto the bridge, or worst case, to the ledge that's right under the bridge which is relatively easy to climb so you can just make your way back to the top, build yourself another fire, and sit until morning and repeat the process. But what if you don't have the armor or the set bonus? Well, what I have found out is if you just kind of stay to the side of Denral, not really get in his face, you can pretty much get any piece that you would like. You can drop down some, or I just kind of like to hover because he will come to you up underneath you. And if you can stay to the side, get the piece that you want, and then get back over top of him, he will push you back up onto the bridge. And then once again, we're just gonna build another fire and sit until morning. Now to get his claw, I did have to drop down some, but he still pushed me right back up on the bridge. A couple of times I did land on the ledge, but it wasn't that big of a deal. Now, if you'll look down here on the ground, you can see all my dragon parts. I just wait until I'm finished before I go collect them because typically they'll just kind of land really close to one another. Now, when you hit Denral, if you need a fang, hit him in the face. If you need a horn, hit him in the horn. If you need a scale, hit him anywhere in the body. If you need a claw, hit him in the foot. And here's our location, guys. We're right here on the Tabantha Great Bridge. But if you'd like to see where you can get weapons and elemental weapons that will respawn, click here. And if you enjoy content like this, show me with a like. If you're new to the channel, I hope you consider subscribing. And if there's anything you think I left out or misspoke about, please leave that in the comments to help others. And I'll just catch you guys next time.